honeybees. Here's a honeybee, Apis mellifera. And this is one of our native bees, a xylocopa. Oh, but boy. one of the things that, if you watch closely, you can see one of the things that these bees are doing when they're visiting the, the salvia flowers for nectar is that they are cheating. Because in order to get effective pollination of this plant, and in order for a pollinator that's doing things the right way to get at the nectar, they need to go into that tubular flower and brush some of the, the pollen that they've got stuck on them into the flower to pollinate it. And if you watch them closely, what a lot of them doing are doing actually is going to the base of the flower and chewing. That's, oh. what, you that's what this honeybee is doing. And that's a shortcut. They chew a hole in the base of the flower. They can go right. They can go right to the, the nectar, right at the bottom of that long tube, without the effort of fighting their way through that. Would they even be able to get in there otherwise? They would be. Okay. When the when the flowers are are at the right stage to be pollinated, some of these have closed up a bit, but they're they're really good at chewing right through the base. Does that shorten the life of the flower? No, probably not, but it may prevent it from being effectively pollinated. Yeah. Is the bumblebee doing the same thing? The bumblebee's doing the same thing. The bumblebees are the native bees that we see most commonly here in the city. This is one here. And we have probably five or six really common bombus uh, that occur here in the city. Bombus is the genus to which all of our bumblebees belong. And Bumblebees occur in Europe and North America and Asia. This looks like a bumblebee, but it's actually a, a, a xylocopa bee. Xylocopa virginica. He's a big guy. That's commonly called a carpenter bee. Oh! They, they build nests in wood, and if you have a deck with railroad ties and so on, in the springtime you'll often see them chewing holes yeah. into the into the They're ties to make their bees. nests. <laughs> Bumblebees nest in the ground for the most part. But, um, Xylocopa virginica is the most common of the carpenter bees in, in Philadelphia, and it's also one of the ones that we see pretty early in the springtime, although they're active all season. And they're a native species? They're a native species. The only non-native bees that I see right here now are, are honeybees. And honeybees, as you probably know, were brought by the, the earliest European settlers as a domesticated insect. And they really are um, truly domesticated. The ones that you see here are essentially either feral populations that have escaped from beekeepers' hives, or some of these may be from the from the uh, uh, captive colony that we have up on the uh, top floor do, of the academy. Do they, they're not a native species, but do they um, affect anything in a negative way? Like where like, well, they, like the butterfly is kind of... Indir in, indirectly they can, because we've become very, very dependent on them for pollinating oh, our, sure. our crops. Yeah. Uh, we depend on crop pollination for a lot of our food yeah. and it's easier and less expensive to pay a beekeeper to fill a tractor trailer truck with beehives and drive it to your or orchard to pollinate the crop than it is to leave intact native habitats around the margins of your orchard and rely on native bees and native flies to pollinate the crop. That, that might make economic sense for a farmer who's growing peaches. Right. The risk is we're depending on a single domesticated animal that's largely reared in captivity in unnatural conditions. It's more susceptible to disease epidemics, which you probably read about, right. colony yep. collapse disorder. And if all of the introduced domesticated honeybees were to get wiped out by such a disease, we would all starve to death because we haven't taken good enough care of native pollinators. So in that indirect sense, um, you could say honeybees are potentially har harmful to our, to yeah. our food ecology. Uh, now the Department of Agriculture is suddenly taking a great interest in native bees and native flies like hoverflies that are important pollinators of crops because they realize putting all our eggs in one basket and depending perpetually on a domesticated insect might not be such a good idea. In fact, it might be risky. Where did the ancestor of the honeybee originate? In southern Europe and Africa. Okay. Uh, and there's a very closely related species that occurs in Asia. Um, the one that is here in North America is Apis mellifera. Uh, that includes both domesticated docile honeybees that we see every day 
and it also includes what um, has been hyped in the media as killer bees. Killer bees are just honeybees, but they're a different genetic uh, strain of honeybees that escaped from a beekeeper's experiment down in South America because he thought by crossing this genetic strain that was from equatorial Africa with domesticated stock that originated from Europe, he could improve honey production. What he didn't bank on is that the behavior of the resulting uh, cross between those two types of Apis mellifera is going to be more aggressive. And those Africanized bees escaped from his apiary in Brazil and they interbred with other feral populations of honeybees from Europe and they converted their behavior gradually to this more aggressive these more aggressive traits and they've moved all the way up now into the southern US. So if you go to places like